Hallo. Ich bin eine Pianistin. Ich spiele ein Konzert April 29. This is how I started playing the piano. I just like to play things with my fingers. Something I loved to do when I was a kid would be to rip pieces of paper apart and I would play pretend chef. So I would do something like this. I would roll up tiny pieces of paper and pretend that is a grain of rice. I don't know, something about the tactile experience, what I find fulfilling in my job. Of course, there are some tedious parts and no, I'm not talking about practicing. I'm talking about non-musical things that I do, which, you know, involves a lot of staring at a computer with a very unsatisfying keyboard. But I enjoy the part where I get to make a difference. That's a big part of why I started to get it with classical and why I show my face sometimes on the internet. I think my skill at um, making rice grains has deteriorated since I was three years old. Perhaps my piano playing has improved a little bit. So the trick is to blow at the dust a little bit so that it comes up to my vacuum. It's a great way to procrastinate. It's called productive procrastination. I have to make this video. I just don't know how. Walk through the program. The idea behind it showing tricky parts, something like that. Playing a few snippets, three to five minutes. Um, especially those who watch my YouTube videos know that I speak kind of Deutsch. 99% of what I say in videos for any of my videos are unscripted. But here is where I do need to script out. I don't know how to do this. And most of these ideas come up when I am um, washing dishes, or taking a shower, or cooking. Could be wrong, you can let me know, but you want to know kind of the realistic life. The real experiences, which includes ups and downs and successes, I mean, teeny bits of successes and lots of failures and mistakes and confusions and all of the wonderful emotions of life. Um, and here is a situation where I have to make something that is like what I do here, but minus all of the complicated ups and downs stuff and just the very concise version of what I do and what I talk about here. So this is going to be a very rambling, rambling video because I'm going to, or you're going to help me in a different, uh, time relation to me but you are helping me by watching this video and by me explaining on camera all of the complication things so that I have all the cards out that you will hear, you will hear the long story and I will cut the short version from this video for this concert presenters YouTube I've never played Beethoven early sonata in a concert before so i thought why not hey that's a way to say it and it is, it is true you see it's just figuring out how best to express my thoughts given the purpose of this video and who it's for that's really what it is i feel bad for future tiffany who has to um go through an hour and a half or two hours of rambling to sift through and create <laughs> video you're getting a long version that's our deal here, you know? You get the real, raw stuff. Not as raw as Patreon, which has, you know, hour-long footages of me sight-reading pieces, but here, pretty raw. It's the concert 
that is in about a month from today that I'm filming. It's on April 29th in Germany, in Mönheim, am Rhein. When a presenter approaches me, the first question I always ask is, what would you like? Basically, there are three ways. From my experience, which is not that much, but it's a little bit of experience for the past few years, you either get complete freedom, whatever you would like to perform, they will say yes. That's great. Actually, all three scenarios are great. But here's the second scenario. Second scenario is they give you a concept, like a theme. For example, Dresden, other upcoming recital in Germany. So many of you bought tickets. It's almost sold out. Amazing. So thank you. Dankeschön. That particular concert, they told me in advance about a year ago. Well, last a year ago. Maybe a year ago. Actually, that concert was postponed like three times. So all the times that I've made this concert program for that festival has changed because of the theme. So sometimes presenters give you a theme and they'd like your music that you choose to be related to that theme. Third scenario is mostly presenters idea of what they would like to hear from you at the concert. And this April 29th concert this is the third scenario. All three scenarios have their own benefits. First scenario where you have complete freedom, sometimes it's a little bit overwhelming because I'm thinking so many other factors and the world has no limits and that can be tricky. It's like I hate having time limits on choosing what I would like to order at a restaurant or even standing in line at like a coffee shop. There's a part of me that's like, I can get whatever I want, but also uh, I don't know what to choose. So scenario one could be like that. Scenario number two, it makes you think within a theme and it gives me the right amount of freedom and the right amount of structure. Third scenario is where I learn the most, where I have a lot of requests from the presenter because I just kind of get to know what people like in classical music and it's always interesting. It can be frustrating, but through that back and forth, I also learn a lot. So not a complaint. Each scenario has their own pros and cons. For this April 29th concert, I was told that there is no certain theme in mind. So not scenario number two, but also not scenario number one with the most amount of freedom because she did mention that she liked a previous program I had, she mentioned she liked Debussy, Scarlatti, Beethoven, Chopin. And they already have a recital with Schumann, so she would like to exclude Schumann from this program. Now, if you watched any of my videos in the past two years, you know that's kind of a challenge for me because I love Schumann. I love Robert Schumann's music for many, 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 many reasons. From philosophical to aesthetic, to emotional, personal, psychological. So that was like crap. Can I say crap? Or poop if you're a kid watching this. I have to exclude Schumann. That's very difficult because especially last year, I was very much in the making of Schumann programs throughout the entire year. There were other artists in the concert series and you have to figure out how to not double up someone. In my case, I also am very sympathetic and understanding of this because I am not the most famous pianist on earth or even a famous one on earth. So if someone else chose a piece that I had proposed, I would give that up. At this stage in my career, absolutely I would give it up. I scratched my head for a few weeks and the kind of person that fights for what I like in music. So that's what I tried to gently suggest that I really um, am disappointed in myself for not being able to come up with a different program or shorter program because my headspace was completely in Schumann. I had to San Francisco and I also had Munich last year around that time. So Schumann was just in my head also for the past four years. I have been in the Schumann world because it's fun. So she was very nice to meet me halfway and say I can, after all, include some Schumann if it doesn't overlap. Someone else picked Papillon and Carnival. I mean, of course somebody would pick Carnival, <laughs> so I'm not surprised. And also someone picked Clara Opus 5, which I forgot what that is. So I'm not a Clara Schumann expert. Anyway. Oh, 
cool. This also didn't work. Speaking of doubling, someone picked Tempest Sonata. So, of course, I said, okay, redo the first half. What will the first half be? So they wanted me to pick another Sonata. That is not as easy as switching out, um... Actually, it's not easy to switch out in any of these scenarios that I'm thinking as an analogy. For example, in fashion, if you really care about a certain aesthetic look, it's not like, oh yeah, someone else is wearing your pants, so switch out your pants. You have to rework your entire look in a way, I think. I, I don't work in fashion, so I'm just thinking. Also, like, I can imagine for a chef, you know, who's really into designing the whole meal, all the courses in a certain way with all of the ingredients if suddenly one of the ingredients is missing or not available or maybe you can't make one of the courses because of whatever reasons then you have to completely rework a lot more things I don't know again cuisine that much but I can imagine it also being more work than it seems it's a little bit like Jenga things could fall apart if you pull out one of the pieces and for this one, the Tempest Sonata was kind of like one of those Jenga pieces in a puzzle where it falls apart because I had the Scarlatti linked to the beginning for the D minor Beethoven Sonata. So that was a link and removing that Tempest would be the equivalent of completely having the Jenga tower tumble. Why did I pick Scarlatti? and Beethoven because these are two composers that I feel comfortable playing. There's not really a deep answer. Scarlatti really was an accidental discovery thanks to you <laughs> and how much you guys comment on Scarlatti Sonata and hearing Scarlatti in my videos in the background of my videos from the past four years. So thank you for helping me discover my affinity towards Scarlatti. I wouldn't say it's like a deep passion for Scarlatti because for me, Scarlatti, these two Scarlattis and others are quite innocent and childlike and they're not, you know, something deep and emotional. So I can't say that I have deep passion for Scarlatti's music. Some of the Sonatas are darker and more emotional. I mean, happy is an emotion, so I guess it is emotional, but not in that gut-wrenching feeling of emotions. Beethoven A major. For my own development as a musician, I like to choose a piece or two to challenge myself and grow so that I'm not just repeating what I already know musically, artistically. So usually I would pick something new. In this case though, it was the Beethoven, Sonata Opus 2, number 2, for the first half. That was new to me completely until last September when I picked it up for Croatia to run through before this concert. Chopin, Clara Schumann, Robert Schumann set for the second half. It's because of this aesthetic alliance and agreement and just support from Schumann for Chopin that I decide to group those composers together. Clara's Mazurka, which inspired Robert Schumann. Davids Bundo Tanza. I think most of you, a lot of you, some of you, know that I like the set. I hope to see you on April 29th. I hope you will enjoy my concert. That's better. Okay. Total, today I have to film four videos, so tonight I am rewarding myself. One of the rewards is going to the opera. Woo! So I think there is a certain magic to discover something on your own without telling you 100% of the answers. I mean, it gave you the reasoning that goes in my head, but it's up to you to find it. And I think that's great. You have the freedom. And if I explain too much, then I'm just restricting the audience's perspective. So it's finding the line between sharing too much and not sharing. <laughs>